Throughout the world, the horse has played a hugely significant role in the history and culture of mankind. For centuries in Iceland, this animal has been uniquely interwoven with the Icelandic people. Since arriving with the first settlers over a thousand years ago, the Viking horse has been isolated on this rugged island in the North Atlantic without genetic input from other breeds. Thanks to strict regulations, the Icelandic horse remains purebred. And due to the geographical location of Iceland, very few equine diseases occur and no vaccinations are required. This also means no horse can enter the country and once a horse leaves Iceland, it can never return. A few years ago, a strategic marketing plan called Horses of Iceland was developed by stakeholders in the Icelandic horse community. Equestrian World travelled to Iceland's capital, Reykjavik, to find out more about this intriguing enterprise. At Landsmot, the country's largest equine competition, showcasing the best riders and horses, we met up with Jelena Om, who manages the venture. So the goals of the Horses of Iceland project is to give the horse a brand outside into the world to show what the Icelandic horse is all about and hopefully inform people of other horse breeds uh, what it is that the Icelandic horse stands for, what our community stands for. So Horses of Iceland started in uh, 2015 when stakeholders in the Icelandic horse community got together and uh, wanted to combine forces to uh, give the horse a presence uh, into the outside world. And we got uh, funding from the Icelandic government. So what's unique about this project is that we both have the government and the entire industry uh, working together as a whole. Before the introduction of the car, the Icelandic horse was seen as a most indispensable servant. With no roads, vast distances and rough terrain, the horses were used for all essential work. The Icelanders had it very rough here for, for a long time with this pretty harsh environment and the horse was basically uh, the most yeah, indispensable servant. It was the most valuable thing that you had. A horse meant that you can uh, get from A to B and it uh, sometimes meant shelter. Um, they have such a unique link to the people. So it's, um, yeah, definitely been a big part of our culture here. The Icelandic horse has evolved and adapted to the country's vast and rugged terrain. Living outdoors all year round, they move easily on uneven ground and cope naturally with mountains and rivers. From these conditions, a hardy, intelligent and unique horse has emerged that has few rivals. They're generally easy to ride and become reliable and treasured companions. It's these qualities that are a key selling point for home and overseas buyers. All horse breeds have three natural gaits and can perform them without training but the horses of Iceland offer more. The uh, uniqueness about the Icelandic horse is that um, we're pretty much one of the only breeds in the world who is competing in all five gates. Our breeding goal is that all five gates are exceptional. So we have the uh, ground gates, the walk, trot, and canter, and gallop. And then up, up on top of that, we have the tolt and the flying pace. The tolt is the speciality of the Icelandic horse. It's a smooth four-beat lateral gait in which the horse's hind legs move well under the body and carry more of the weight on the hind end, allowing the front to rise, be free and loose. The flying pace is a lateral gait, which we compete in in only um, quite short distances because it's so fast, so the longest distance that we compete in is 250 meters and um, the horse really needs to kind of get down low and stretch himself out to uh, get the flying phase. So this is really our challenge with Icelandic horse is, is to get all of those five gates with a perfect beat and the way that we want to present it. So um, that's our fun part. It's basically building up a horse that, that can uh, carry your rider on, on all those five gates. The National Icelandic Horse Competition, known in the country as Landsmot, is held every other year in various locations around Iceland, attracting thousands of spectators from home and abroad. In July 2018, the competition took place close to Reykjavik during one of the coldest and wettest Icelandic summers for decades. 
So Landsmot is basically uh, translated into land or country meeting. So um, what happens is that uh, all across the country, clubs hold uh, qualification tournaments and there's a quota system basically. So according to the size of the club, they can send so and so many people to Landsmot. So here we only see the best horses and riders that the country has available at the time. So it's really the creme de la creme and um, it's like a candy store for us in, in this horse world to, to watch these horses and people on the track. It's amazing. The quality of the gate is judged in all competitions with an emphasis on horsemanship and the interaction between horse and rider. Diddy Bardison is a living legend in the sport. He was unbeatable for two decades and now, even into his late 60s, he's still competing. To date, Diddy is also the only horse rider to win the coveted Icelandic Athlete of the Year award, which he received in 1993. For me, uh, at that time, it was uh, the, the highest that you can come uh, to, to get an award for, for your lifetime uh, time in the horses. You cannot go higher than be the sport rider of the year. Uh, I think that is for me, but uh, I uh, look at me as an uh, agent for, for the Icelandic horse, so I was there for the horse writers and breeders and everyone in, in this moment. And it opens a lot of doors for the horse riding, had a lot of meaning. Diddy's recognition heightened the profile of his sport throughout the country, but today technology is playing a significant role in profiling the Icelandic horse. Social media has been a huge part uh, of this Horses of Iceland project uh, from the very beginning. Uh, when we decided on how we wanted to reach the people and uh, build up the brand, social media was one of the main um, channels that we wanted to focus on. So uh, Facebook and Instagram, we have very um, active followers. We have over 70,000 people following us. So when you talk about engagement in the social media world, uh, we basically knock everything out of the park because people are so um, in love with this horse and, and so passionate about it that uh, they are all our ambassadors out there in the world. It's, it's a lot of fun. Next month, in the second of our features, we'll meet two men closely linked to the Horses of Iceland project. One is the president of the International Federation of Icelandic Horse Associations, who owns a breeding farm on the Snæfellsnes Peninsula in West Iceland. The other is involved in the growth of tourism that's developing around riding and the desire to explore Iceland's stunning landscape on horseback.